Molly, do you have to be quite so noisy? I've got a lot to be noisy about. I'm a very remarkable young girl. Are you? Uh -huh. You could have fooled me. I just got my psychological aptitude test back. And you know where I rank? Just below the human race. <laughs> I came in in the top percentile. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. What's it mean? That means that I'm practically a genius. My aptitude test shows that I can do anything I put this great mind to. If I'm so brilliant, what are my children going to be? In trouble. <laughs> Where's Kathy? I want to tell her the great news. She's upstairs with her guinea pigs. You mean they've been born? Yeah, the blessed event took place about an hour ago. That's great! <laughs> Got to eat something. Hi, Cat. Hello, Patty. What do you think of them? Oh, they're beautiful. I can't believe it, Kathy. You predicted exactly what they were going to look like before they were even born. All I did was investigate the mother and father guinea pig's family history. Then, using a method that was discovered long ago by Gregor Mendel, I took an educated guess as to what the offspring should look like. It's simply the law of genetics. Kathy, this genetics bit, does it work with people, too? Of course. You mean, I could predict what my children are going to be like before they're born? Not necessarily. Why not? Well, a lot of it depends on the man you select for your husband. Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet, the ballet russe, and Crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still they're cousins. Identical cousins and you find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins. Get this straight, Kat. You mean as great as I am, I could have terrible children? Not if you selected a man whose genes complemented yours. Oh, I see. And what I need is someone tall, good looking, dark hair, sense of humor, doesn't every girl? <laughs> this is for science. Gregor Mendel, move over. <laughs> Richard, can I ask you another question? I've already told you everything I know about my great-grandparents and my grandparents yeah, I know, but and... this is different. Say, Patty, why this sudden interest in my family? What makes you think it's so sudden? I'm just fascinated by all your relatives. Yeah, they are quite a fascinating bunch. Yeah. Well, the way you eat, you should be at least eight feet tall. I'm lucky enough to be 5'10". I tower over everyone in my family as it is. Yeah, I know you. You told me. Rich, you know I wouldn't hurt you for anything in the world. I should hope not. I'm very sensitive. What I'm trying to tell you is that Gregor Mendel wouldn't approve of you. Well, who's he? Richard, I have to think of my children. Pass the ketchup. I can't marry you, Richard. Oh, pass the mustard, please. It's nothing personal, Richard. It's just that it's the law of genetics. Uh, pass the mustard, please. Richard, you see, your looks really aren't bad. It's just that, well, I, I doubt if it's what Mendel had in mind for me. I, I can't afford to take a chance. I have to find somebody who's perfect. You see, if your maternal grandmother and grandfather had had a college education, and your paternal grandmother and grandfather had a higher IQ, and your father was a few... Hey, now, wait old. a minute. They're my ancestors you're attacking. Oh, I'm not attacking anybody. 
It's Mendel. He says that... I don't care what he says. If my family's not good enough for you, then I'm not good enough for you. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Oh, excuse me, are you Edward Donaldson? No. I'm just a member of the Edward Donaldson fan club. <laughs> uh, my name is Patty Lane, and I was wondering if you'd help me with a survey I'm making. Shoot. Thank you. Let's start with your height. How tall are you, Edward? Edward! Edward! What now? How tall are you, please? Five eleven and a half. Person. In the morning. In the morning? Persons always taller when they first get up. Read that once in a comic book. You read comic books? Sure. Hey, did you see what happened to the mass surfer? Yeah. He just got washed out. Hi, Kenny. Oh, hello, Patty. Gee, I haven't seen you since last summer. Oh, I've been busy. You know, I asked you for a date in July. And you said you'd look in your book and let me know. I just looked. The answer is yes. Do you really mean that? Of course I mean it. Well, what about Richard Harrison? Oh, he's okay, but his jeans flunked. Huh? Nothing. Well, you've grown since last year. Yeah, three inches. Your father must be a giant. No, there's a very funny part about it. There's no one in my family over 5'5". Five, five. How about that? How about that? Say, when can I uh, take you out to dinner? I'll look in my book and let you know. Patty, what are you doing? Who, me? What are you doing in that file? I'm looking for something. I found it. I'm trying to find out which boy has the highest IQ. And you know who it is? Rodion Zablinski. Do you know him? No. Neither do I. But I'm going to. I can see him now. Tall. Romantic. Brilliant. Rodion, I love you. How's that sound? Like you're in trouble. <laughs> Uh, hello, Miss Gray. Hello, Patty. How are you? Fine, thank you. Miss Gray, I wonder if you could help me. I'm looking for Rodion Zablinski. Yes, he's over there. Thank you. Hello there. Hello. You look just like I knew you would. I do? Yep. Tell me, Rodian, how... Oh, you're looking for Rodian. Hey, Ro. Yeah? Someone's looking for you. <laughs> you're looking for me? Are you Rodian Zablinski? Yeah? Rodian, would you stand up, please? <sighs> I am standing. <laughs> talk to you. Richard, please don't make it difficult. I told you it's all over between us. Yeah, but you didn't tell me why. Just trust me, Richard. It's bigger than both of us. I suppose you mean Kenny. Richard, everybody's looking at us. Oh, have you seen him? Have you seen him? He's coming down the hall. See who? Him! And your cousin Kathy's with him. Hello, physiology one. Hello. Hello. That's a name, not a characteristic. <laughs> it must be the material, because my delivery isn't that good. Uh, anyway, I'm your uh, substitute teacher. Sorry to say that Mrs. Keeler will be out of action for about a week, a victim of the flu bug. Well, there's a, 
There's no cause for alarm. I've come fully equipped. I'll say he has. <laughs> Mrs. Keeler has given me her assignment book, and I've got a very able assistant, Miss Kathy Lane. Now, Mrs. Keeler told me that this is a, uh, a very fine class, and I'm pleased to be here. I'm sure we'll become very, very good friends. Don't say that again. anything anyone can do for me. Well, I'm sure it's not all that bad. I have a problem. I've gathered that. What's your name? Patty. Patty Lane. I'm Kathy Lane's cousin. You know, your physiology assistant. Oh, yes. The little girl did the, uh, the study on the guinea pig. Yes, she's a very gifted girl, Kathy. Yeah. I just don't dig the genetics bit. Well, it's really very simple. Not for me. I need help. Well, you could always try studying a little harder. I hardly study now. I mean, I study hard now. Oh, I see. Do you, uh, you take notes in class? Like, like crazy. Do you ask questions when you don't understand? Constantly. I've tried everything. Well, what about a, an extra credit report? That's it. Now, why didn't I think of that? I'll do a report just like Kathy's. And you and I can work on it together. Well, Kathy did a very difficult project. Oh, I know, but I'm very willing. And if I do a good job, it'll be sure to bring up my grades. And how can I miss with you helping me? Well, you certainly are very enthusiastic. Oh, you have no idea. All right. I can let you use Hilda, my, my pet rabbit. She should be a mother in about a week's time. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I'll take very good care of her, Mr. Noble. Don't you worry. I'll treat her just as if she was ours. Well, I'll jot down some family background of hers for you. Oh, good, thank you. I, I appreciate that very much. Yes, at least it'll help you out and give you a start. Now, Patty, feel free to check with me any time if you want any more information on this family background business, right? Oh, I will. I will. Thank you. Come on, Hilda. <laughs> How are you this morning? Fine, except for one problem. Yes? In order to figure out what Hilda's offspring will look like, I need a little more information. I was wondering about her grandfather on her father's side. You said its fur was dark, but you didn't say exactly what color. Well, kind of an off-brown, as I recall. Oh, well. I'll bet your grandfather on your father's side had dark hair, too, just like you. Yes, all the men on my father's side of the family had dark hair for generations. And on your mother's side? Well, kind of hard to recall. She had a pretty large family. Oh. Well, thanks for the information on Hilda. All right. See you at lunch. All right. And Hilda's father has bright pink eyes. And so does your father. Have bright blue eyes. Yeah. What about your grandmother? What about her? What color eyes does she have? Patty, I fail to see the significance. Just curious. I've become fascinated by genetics. Oh, very glad to hear that. And it's all you're doing. Did your grandfather go to college? Are you sure you're not confusing me with Hilda? Oh, I could never confuse you with anyone. <laughs> I can't wait to see that report. I keep expecting you to ask me how far I can jump, or whether or not I can twitch my nose. Can you? <laughs> Patty, I think you've enough information on Hilda. I suggest you go and finish your chart. Yes, sir. Patty. Yes? 
Try to remember that figures can lie, and heredity predictions don't always turn out exactly. Not always, but this one will. <laughs> a chance with you hogging him all the time. Oink. Oh, Patty, if you don't stop acting like a pig about this, it's going to mean war. Well, what'll it be? Are you going to share him or hog him? Just call me Porky. Patty! <laughs> Dear, I thought we were at war. Oh, we are. But we want to know just one thing. What's he really like? Well, if anyone knows Mr. Noble, you do. Mr. Noble is perfect. Absolutely perfect. You know something? What? Mr. Mendel would have loved him. I want my girl back. What's that? I said, I want my girl back, sir. Well, who are you and who's your girl? Patty. Patty Lane. And I'm Richard Harrison. I see. You can't hit me. You're, you're, uh, you're older than I am. Now, don't be ridiculous. I don't want to hit you. I want to help. You do? You want to help me get Patty back? I'll do everything I can. I don't think you can help me. She thinks I'm ugly. Well, Patty said that? Well, not exactly, but that's what she meant. She thinks all my relatives are apes. Tell me something, Richard. Has Patty been asking you a lot of questions about your ancestors? Has she? She's been picking my family tree apart limb from limb. <laughs> I wish I did. I don't know what's gotten into her. Well, I have a feeling it's not too serious. The only way I can get her back is to have plastic surgery and find a new family to adopt me. I don't think you have to go quite to that extreme. You mean that you think there's a chance I could get her back? Yes, I would say so. Well, what do I have to do? All you have to do is wait. For what? For Hilda to have her babies. <laughs> I was just going by your room to return this book. That's a very becoming dress. Oh, this whole thing, I just threw it on. Oh, some good news. Mrs. Keeler's coming back on Monday. Hello, Mr. She Noble. She isn't. I mean, she is? Oh, that's great news. Oh, you'll be teaching one of the other classes, though. No, I'm afraid not, Patty. I think I'll be leaving. Leaving? Where will you go? Well, I've been offered many positions. I could uh, teach in Florida. Oh, that's too hot. Or Montana. Too cold. Chicago. Too windy. New York is the perfect climate. Well, I'm very pleased that you're happy here. Oh, don't misunderstand. I, I could be happy in Florida or Chicago or Montana. I mean, home is where the heart is. Mm. Do you like to travel a lot? Yes. Did your grandfather like yes, to travel? Yes, my grandfather liked to travel. My grandmother liked to travel. As a matter of fact, we're a very traveling family. Groovy. <laughs> dinner tonight, would you? I'm afraid I can't, Patty. Oh, that's too bad. I think Hilda might have her babies tonight. Is she really? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll be there. Do you mean it? Indeed I do. Oh, groovy. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it, Mr. Noble. You love my family. <laughs> sure I will. Here's the address. Seven o'clock. Groovy. I'll go out and buy you a double chocolate fudge cake. See you at seven. How does that look, Mama? Well, I think it looks lovely, dear. Oh, you shouldn't have gone to all that trouble for me. We well, didn't. We're having a dinner guest. Oh? Do I know her? Mr. Noble is coming to dinner. Well, well. So I finally get to meet the great man. You will be nice to him, won't you, Papa? No. I'll be my usual snarling self. <laughs> oh, you love him, Papa. He's really special. He must be. You haven't talked about anything else all week. Uh, I know I shouldn't ask this, but uh, how's Richard? You mean poor Richard? Oh, is that who I mean? 
He flunked the gene test. I'm sorry I asked. Mr. Noble's here. He's early. He's probably hungry. What'll I do? Try opening the front door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're all hospitality, aren't you? Richard, what are you doing here? You just opened the door and said, come in. We have nothing to talk about. Yes, we do. I found out who Gregor Mendel is. So? So all your problems are over. Good thing. Can we talk about it tomorrow? Oh, wait a minute. I like to talk about it now. You uh, seem nervous. Who? Me? Nervous? What have I got to be nervous about? Oh, uh, that must be Alice. Richard, why don't you go out the back door? You're awful anxious to get rid of me, aren't you? No. Uh, look, Rich, I'll make a deal with you. You go out the back door now, and I'll meet you tomorrow at the Shake Shop, and we'll really discuss it. Do you promise? Cross my heart. Okay. Tell Alice I said hello to him. <laughs> she's going to have, and jump what they're going to look like. You see, I've, I've really been working on it, and I Patty. figured... Never mind. Mr. Noble, how do you do? I'm Patty's mother, and this is my husband, Mr. Lane. How do you do? Nice to meet you. Genetics is a fascinating science. I did some experiments in it when I was a boy. It really works, too. Well, only to a degree, honey. What do you mean? Your father means it's not an exact science. Exact enough for me. You're a mother. <laughs> Hilda must have had her babies while we were eating. Hey, Hilda had our babies. There are going to be six of them. Three dark brown, three light brown. Four? That can't be. I had it all figured out. I guess Hilda had some ideas of her own. Oh, I think they're darling. Well, that's not the point, Mama. I scientifically predicted how many there were going to be and what they were going to look like. And I was wrong. Now, I conducted my experiment just like Kathy. Well, Kathy's didn't always work out right either. They have to. What about Mendel? Patty, there are dominant genes and there are recessive genes. And the recessive genes show up pretty much when they feel like it. Now, no one can predict them. Now you tell me. Well, I was going to tell you earlier, but I thought it was best that you learn by yourself. You knew what I was doing all along. Mm-hmm. I guess I got a little over-scientific. Well, science is a pretty wonderful thing, Patty, but there are certain things in life that you can't plan with a computer. Yes, sir. You know something? I'm kind of relieved. Are you? Mm-hmm. Because when it comes right down to Mendel or Richard, I'll take Richard. <laughs> Where are you going, dear? We're just picking me up. We're going to the shake shop. So that's on again. It was never really off, Papa. You know, last night, Rich and I had a long talk. You know what we'd like? A beautiful Cape Cod house with a patio and lots of trees in Connecticut near a lake. So would I. I'm glad everything's all right with you, Sue. It couldn't be better. Mendel sure had a lot to learn. Did he? Yeah. Statistics aren't everything, Papa. He forgot the magic ingredient. What's that? Love. My children may not have blue eyes and black hair. And they may not be geniuses. Do you know what they are going to be? What? Mine. All mine. <laughs> Thank you. 
Here's Kathy who's lived most everywhere From Zanzibar to Barclay Square But Patty's only seen the sights A girl can see from Brooklyn Heights What a crazy pair But they're cousins Identical cousins And you'll find They laugh alike They walk alike At times they even talk alike You can lose your mind 